Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rick Games Video, we're going to be discussing a plethora of news which has popped up over the past 24 or so hours, of course, focused on the tech industry. The first we're going to focus on is AMD and the Vega 10 die renders that AMD have released to the internet and how so many websites and people seem to be making such a big deal over the fact that they have faked them and they're not actual images of, you know, in terms of photographs of the Vega 10 die. NVIDIA's GP106 based crypto mining station, which is equipped with no fewer than eight graphics cards of all things. And sticking with NVIDIA for a moment, we're going to focus on another controversy. We seem to have quite a few of those this video. And that is NVIDIA being reported to have an SDR and a HDR monitor set up side by side. But the SDR monitor has had its image quality set settings adjusted so that the difference and disparity between it and the HDR monitor appear greater. In other words, they severely muted the image to make the perceived difference larger. And then finally, we're going to tackle some KB Lake 7740K information because we have some early overclocking reports on this processor and the CPU has hit over 7500 megahertz with enthusiast grade overclocking and cooling. So as promised, we're going to be starting things out with AMD and the Vega die. Well, to call it a die shot is a bit of a stretch. It's not quite a die shot and it's not really a block diagram. It's kind of a halfway house between the two. But anyway, um, as the internets tend to do, they have made a really big deal over the fact that it is a fake. It's a 3D rendering. It's basically put together. And I kind of am shocked that so many people are surprised by this because AMD didn't really try to palm it off as real. They weren't really going, as far as I'm aware anyway, they weren't really making it uh, appear to be like, you know, this is a photograph or anything like that. They could have definitely have said, hey, this is a mock-up, this is a rendering. But unfortunately, that's just kind of how PR and marketing works as, as a general rule of thumb. Um, and it is worth noting that AMD have actually not released any specifics, this is according to Scott Wasson, which we did actually have a uh, exclusive interview with concerning Vega a few months ago, but uh, Scott has confirmed via Twitter that there have not been any officially released die shots of the real hardware yet, and they've also not released die sizes or any such information. So in my opinion, one of the reasons they've done this is basically to reduce speculation and basically means so they can keep the stuff closer to their chest, which I guess from a marketing standpoint and to avoid leaks or at least reduce leaks, that's probably one of the reasons they've done it. Unfortunately, things like this in marketing happen an awful lot and NVIDIA have done it multiple times before as well. Uh, for example, there was the whole Drive PX2 demo where NVIDIA actually used fake Pascal GPUs, which are essentially 980s being paraded around as Pascal. And honestly, it's just kind of like, you know, par for the course. And I don't really understand why people are so upset about this. It is what it is. Um, I do feel that companies should be a little more upfront and honest about it, but that's just my opinion. It doesn't mean that, you know, we're not going to be seeing Vega release until like another 12 years into the future or anything like that. Or that, you know, the graphics cards falling way behind schedule, which is some of the uh, reasons that people are speculating about online. It's just kind of par for the course. I don't think it's a really big deal in terms of like, you know, the, the representation of the state of the silicon or any indication upon release date or anything like that. It's just kind of marketing, and it is what it is. It's just part of the industry, unfortunately. Next up, a few days ago, we did discuss NVIDIA and the company, much like AMD themselves, working on graphics cards, which are specifically being developed for the cryptocurrency mining craze, which is currently going around, simply because the price of Bitcoins and other such things are, well, out the stratosphere right now so obviously people are snapping up hardware it's one of the reasons that for example the 570 and the 580 are absolutely going out of stock like crazy and as a slight aside amd's stock prices are ramping up and i think nvidia's are doing very similar anyway the folks over at videocards.com have managed to grab a look at the first pascal based gpu uh cryptocurrency mining station what is it well essentially it's pretty much the early reports um, clarified. So what we have here are 
graphics cards based upon the GP106 architecture combined with a Celeron mobile processor, 4 gigs of DDR3 RAM and a 64 gigabytes SATA. In other words, this card is really most of the performance as is typical with mining. Most of the performance is coming from the graphics cards. There are actually eight of them, up to eight of them, uh, running simultaneously. I don't feel it really requires me to tell you this, but I'm going to quickly mention it. Anyway, a system like this is really kind of a bit dicey to buy unless you really are going after mining. Like I wouldn't suggest you buy this for funses because the resale value of it is going to suck because not only, of course, will the graphics architecture slowly become out of date over the next couple of years, but unless you're going to have... You know, unless you're going to really put this into like a folding at home project or something similar, or maybe you're just going to keep pushing the crypto mining. But do remember, it does cost money to be running these things. It, it's over a thousand watts of energies, which is an awful lot of power. So you know, you're not just going to be running this, for, you know, for fun if the price of these uh, of these cryptocurrencies starts to crash. So do bear that in mind. But anyway, for folks who are interested in this, will possibly have other usages other than folding, whatever then that is something to bear in mind. These graphics cards also cannot be used for gaming. They are also passively cooled. The reason they can't really be run for gaming is because, well, they don't have any display connectors. So you can't really just take a power up the system and then start trying to sell it for spares or whatever in the future. So basically you're buying this for a specific purpose. But anyway, uh, moving on to another NVIDIA topic. And NVIDIA have landed themselves in some hot water. So currently a lot of gaming a lot of gaming companies whether you're hardware based as in like making graphics cards whether you're uh, creating monitors or whether you're even a games developer hell sony microsoft have really started to well push hdr hdr high dynamic range in terms of monitors really is the future for games and well entertainment in general the idea here is that you have a better uh, a better range of colors a little bit a better range of contrast brightness values and essentially certain scenes in particular do definitely look better with hdr however there is s this issue is a bit like me telling you that let's say 1080p is a better overall image quality than let's say a traditional sd or standard definition television but all of the demos you're looking at are from your standard sd tv in other words you can't fully appreciate the additional pixels or additional clarity on screen much is the same when companies are trying to show off the benefits of hdr and if you were to take a look at let's say sony's playstation 4 conference for example they too went through very similar issues when they were trying to show off hdr images versus an SDR because let's face it most people who are watching the conference or have looked at this stuff on YouTube or what have you are of course looking at it on a traditional screen and it's especially true if you're looking at uh, like a, a mobile phone like you know HDR mobile phones aren't exactly a dime a dozen so what NVIDIA did is they worsened the, H the SDR image and it was a standard dynamic range monitor which most folks currently have they reduced the saturation, they muted the colors, they reduced the contrast, blah, 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 blah. They made it look worse. And anyway, a, a website, Hardware Canucks, actually noticed that because they were granted access to the monitor and the settings. So what they noticed is that they were no longer running the factory values, and basically they had a severely muted slash not exactly representative image on the SDR monitor and of course the HDR screen was left in all of its glory. Now I'm kind of 50-50 on this because NVIDIA should have been more honest. They should have said hey this is we're attempting to mock up a demonstration about this um, and they weren't so I don't really like that. I, I feel that's somewhat dishonest. However I do feel for NVIDIA and a lot of folks in the same industry who were trying to demonstrate this so nvidia do have a bit of an issue to showcase this stuff but i feel they should have not you know worsened the image they should have been true to the you know representation or the better way of doing it was to say hey this is like a mock-up this is what you know the difference would be if you know as, as in terms of perception next 
And final piece of news is Intel and the i7 7740K, also known as the KB Lake X. So initially there were reports that the CPU managed to hit 7.5 gigahertz using liquid helium. And this, as far as I'm aware, was done by Team AU with a Gigabyte OC Lab. Um, and they managed to do this with a Gigabyte X299 SOC Champion. But very shortly afterwards, the infamous uh, German overclocker, uh, De Bauer, had managed to actually pip this to the post. And he has managed to achieve a rather eye-watering 7,562 megahertz. So in other words, he's slightly beat their score. Not exactly by a lot or anything like that, but did manage to slightly beat them by just a few by just a few megahertz. And if you're wondering what, how this compares to, let's say, a 7700K, well, obviously it does depend upon the cooling used and all of that stuff, but... Um, a 7700K, uh, there's a couple of different references, but um, you can hit like 7200 megahertz is one uh, one entry of the valid stations on CPU-C OC world records. But the absolute fastest, at least as far as I'm aware, is 7383 megahertz, but this is only with a single core running and a single thread. So in other words, this is not exactly going to be rip-roaring. You would get much better performance and a much lower clock speed with all cores running, of course. However, this is a proof of concept. But for reference, the Bowers um, score, at least once again, as far as I'm aware, is with all four threads running. So all four cores and all eight threads. So if we were to take this at very face value, it does look like the 7740K is probably capable of slightly higher clocks, a couple of hundred megahertz. But whether this is indicative of, well, you know, realistic world, uh, you know, real world scenarios, in other words, where you're not strapping essentially, you know, 50 pounds of liquid and nitrogen to the top of your CPU, well, I don't know. Anyway, it's kind of cool. I guess technically it is very cool nevertheless oh and for those wondering this motherboard was an Asus ROG Rampage 6 which is of course using the socket 2066 so I don't know just at least to me that's kind of cool it's, it's kind of interesting I'm not exactly a hardcore overclocker anymore or anything like that I've never been like a super hardcore overclocker but I do find it quite fascinating to read Anywho, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.